Hi everybody, welcome Tammy from Tammy's Homesteading Crafts. Today we are in the YouTube corner, uh, knitting room, whatever you guys really want to call it. It's my little corner where I film and enjoy some knitting. Um, yeah, so we are in for another knitting podcast, episode 26. Uh, we've got some really good news. So if you guys are interested in any of that, we've got a finished object. We've got all kinds of stuff. So if you guys are interested, stick around. So before we get started, I just want to welcome everybody to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending this little bit of time with me each week. I appreciate it. For those of you who this might be your very first video that you're watching, welcome and I hope you enjoy the content. For those of you who've been here from the beginning, supported me each week, um, subscribed and liked my channel, I appreciate you guys tremendously. And I thank you so much for the support that you have been giving me. For those of you who have not subscribed, please consider doing so. It does benefit me by you subscribing to my channel. I also want to have a shout out to all of the new subscribers. Thank you so much. Um, we are almost at 500 and I am so excited. Hopefully um, we can get to 500 here rather quickly. I am coming up on my two year anniversary. So maybe we can have 500 before we hit our two year anniversary, which would be so much fun. Um, so yeah, if you guys have not um, hit the notification button, tr do that because that allows uh, you to know when I put out a new video so that it, it notifies you. And also the thumbs up button, by clicking the thumbs up, the like button, it lets YouTube know that my content is liked by people and it will push that content onto other people who are looking for this type of podcast. So please do those two things. It does benefit me by you doing those two things as well. Okay, so let's get into our podcast because we have a lot of stuff to go over. Okay, so the first thing we usually do with these type of podcasts is we'll go over any new updates to the shop and then any other administrative things that I need to talk about. So let's get into shop updates. We have no new bags to show. Um, haven't been, I'm, I'm sewing bags, but I'm not showing any right now. I've got a lot of bags that are going out to orders here and there, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so I'm just not putting any new bags into the shop. We did that line of, um, 50 bags that I put in with the five or six different um, designs. I think it was seven different designs. We have those in the shop. So they are still um, in the shop. Some of those are still in the shop. So if you're interested in any of them, grab them. We have um, our Valentine's Day bags are in the shop. And also I have put in uh, some St. Patty's Day bags. So those are some other ones in the shop that you can look at and grab while they are still available. Getting some more St. Patty's Day bags done here and by next week I should have some more done. But that's um, pretty much it as far as uh, information or bags for the website. We do have some new stitch stoppers for the website. These are not all that we have. These are just some of the new ones that we have coming in. So I just want to show these again and so that you guys can see what we have. I got some more... Um, yeah, Baby Yoda. We got some more of these. A little different style than the one I had. I wasn't able to get the exact same one I had. So we've got a little bit different. But he's still cute. Um, another one is uh, Wizarding Little Boy and Girl. Which, if you guys are Harry Potter fans, you will know that that looks like um, Harry and Hermione. Uh, so... But they will be on the website as Wizarding Boy and Girl just because of copyright issues. I can't actually put um, the names. I can put uh, Harry Potter, Wizarding Boy and Girl, but I can't put the actual, you know, Harry Potter theme. I can use that, but I can't use the other ones um, without having some issues onto the website. 
So, and then the last ones that I have is, um, they're from the Flintstones. It's uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam that I got to be able to put into the shop. So those are the three newest, I guess I want to say, um, stitch shoppers that I have. I have more coming every day. I can't, I got to stop getting on the computer. I need to stay in the sewing room and sew or knit and not get near a computer because as soon as I get on the computer I see something I like and then I start searching and then the next thing you know I've got a huge order of something that I've got whether it's fabric or stitch stoppers or something there's always something I have coming that I need to um I mean they're selling and I and I need to replace them but it's just yeah I need to stop buying who wants to I don't Okay, so that is basically all of the updates to the website. Okay, so let's talk about our finished objects because I have one. I got my Trout Creek shawl finished. I absolutely love the color of it. It is gorgeous. I'm hoping that shows up and in my head doesn't show through there, but the colors, I absolutely love them. I did, however, lose on yarn chicken. I had to put in a little bit of another color at the very end. I literally had this much left of my yarn. And I was like, I'm not going to make it. I, I lost on yarn chicken. But it's just in the tail. And it's only a little tiny bit. So it's not like it's a big, big deal, but I lost. But I wanted to use every inch of that purple on the bottom of that. I don't know, I would have probably been okay if I hadn't decided to do an I-cord bind off. But I love the look of the I-cord bind off on my um, Katie shawl. It's got the I-cord bind off and then it's got the I-cord on the one side. And I actually ended up doing an I-cord on the one side of this because it just wasn't laying flat. And the side that's going to be next to my face was the carry side, you know, where you increase on. And I was okay with that. Um, but the other two sides, I really liked that they were, um, yeah, that they just laid with a nice smooth rolled edge. I like the edge on it. It just looks finished to me. So um, that's why I did the, the I-cord on both the beginning edge and the final cast off. But if I wouldn't have done the I-cord, if I wouldn't have done the I-cord um, edge at the bottom, I would have had enough yarn to cast off my row if I was just doing a regular cast off. But, you know, I like the look of the I-cord. So I did it and like I said that little tiny bit is not a big deal it's you probably wouldn't have noticed it if I didn't show it to you and a lot of times those are covered up anyways the way I wear my shawls so I'm not too worried about it so that is the only finished object I have this week but I got one I'm gradually getting all of my shawls and garments that I had cast on previous. Actually, this one didn't take too long. I cast this on after the first of the year. Um, I did it for, actually, I'll talk about my yarn. My yarn is from Cornbread and Honey. It is one of her scrappy cakes that she puts together. And she actually is doing a, a mini skein along 2024 on Instagram. And I signed up for that. So I was doing that. And it's just any you, any project. But it had to be at least 50% of her yarn to use up mini skeins or um, scraps or pieces or anything like that. So I considered this, since it was a scrappy cake, that it was basically mini skeins that were tied together. I considered this one of my projects for there. Um, it turned out really good. I was really happy with it learn some new stitches and actually really really love the way the scarf looks 
it's so springy. I am ready for spring. So bring on the warm weather here. Um, we haven't really had much snow. We've only had snow for three or four days. Um, as far as it's snowing, it stayed around a little bit, but it's now melting. It's getting warm again. Um, I'm not sure we're really going to get a whole lot of snow this year, which, you know, I'm, I'm kind of okay with. But, um, yeah, I'm ready to bring out the spring weather where I can wear my shawls and a light coat and be happy. Um, so, yeah, so that is my only finished object. Loving it. Love the way it looks. Love the way it wears. I have not blocked it yet. I just got it off the needles this morning. Speaking of today, today is January 30th, 2024. Forgot to say that in the beginning. Um, yeah, so we are just working on a couple other things. So let's go into our whips because we have some of them. We haven't got them all done. So let's get into our whips. Okay. With our whips, I, I'm going to show it to you, but I don't think I did anything on it. Um, and it is my easy B sweater. I really need to get some time, sit down and work on getting the rest of my ribbing done so that I can get into my color work. Cause I really, really want to do color work, but when I sit down, after I've sewn all evening, I sit down and I need to be able to concentrate a little bit. And when I'm up here, it's fine. I can't, I can concentrate and do some of the more detailed knitting. But when I'm downstairs in the living room with my husband, he'll have the TV going. He'll have YouTube going on something, shorts or something on YouTube. And there's too much noise and I can't concentrate. If I put a podcast in, I can't concentrate um, because I can still hear his two things going in the background. Um, if I have just the TV going, I can ignore the TV. It's just background noise and I can think about what I'm doing. Um, so I need to just suck it up and figure out and get this done because I really don't have a lot more of this ribbing to do to get this to the point that I can start adding in my color work. And I really want to get to into the color work and get this sweater going so that it's, it's actually doing something. But like I said, I showed it, but I don't think I really did hardly anything on it, but that's going to change by the next podcast that I do because I need to get some knitting done. If I get it to a point where I can take it two places, and just do minimal things. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping I, I'm able to start taking that with me to knitting things so that I can um, work on that. Okay, the next thing that I've been working on, and I'm a couple of days behind, because I last time I worked on this was Sunday. I did not do Sunday's color, or Sunday's design. I did um, Saturday's, Friday and Saturday's design. I was two days behind and then I had somewhere I needed to be on Sunday, so I didn't get Sunday's design done. Monday was a color work design, so I wasn't doing that. Today's design I did not get done. So I'm two days behind, which I'll get caught up. I'm not worried about it, but it is my daily shawl. Um, yeah, I, I just, I really like that I'm learning all these new stitches. Um, like in that, it's, it's got a lot of texture. It's going to have a lot of design in it. And I'm okay with that. I really like, I like it. I like that I'm learning so much new things, so many new stitches, so much. Um, yeah, I really, really like it. So yeah, like I said, I'm two days behind, but I'll get caught up. It's not, right now it's not taking too long to get across the row. I'm sure once I get to a lot more stitches, it's going to take me quite a bit to get across the row. And I'm probably not going to want to do four rows of a design. And we might change at that point. Who knows? 
we'll see what we're going to do. Um, this is just a daily work in progress to be able to see, you know, like I said, to get some of those new designs in there and see, and it is definitely going to be a, <laughs> a different shawl. I mean, all of the extra stitches that are in there. Yeah. And like I said, I am not picking colors in any random or any order. They're just, I'm going into the bin and I'm just grabbing which one I want next. Try not to put all of the same. I do have a lot of the same kind of color. Trying not to put all of them together, trying to grab them and um, work them in between but uh yeah i'm down to the point of i don't think i have any more yarn that is just a little bit i think most of it has got a good amount so i'm going to get half inch or an inch of row of that color instead of maybe just a little bit um now that i've got you know 50 60 stitches stitches on my needle um but yeah it's going good. I'm liking it. It's just, it's going to take me a year. And this is one of those things I have to keep in mind that it's not going to be done for a year. Because um, I really don't like to have so many unfinished projects. I have seven, I think, right now. Two of them are socks. Um... But I know this is going to be a year-long project. Um, the socks could, at least one pair of socks could get off my needles in a relatively couple of days. Um, I just, I'm not feeling socks right now. And I, I love doing socks. It's just, but I'm just not feeling socks. And it might be one of those things that I get it to the point that I can just, I think I'm at the beginning of a heel flop on the socks. And if I am, I just need to finish my heel flap, gusset, and get onto the foot, and then they would be done. My color work socks, on the other hand, I really have to sit down and figure out where I'm at. I do know I'm into the gusset on them. I've got the heel flap, heel turn done. I'm into the gusset working towards the foot um, with the color work. So I just have to figure out what's going on with them. Um, but yeah. That's where I'm at with those things. Got a number of things I want to start, but we still have some more whips. So let's go over the other whips that we have. The next one is my other scrappy cake that I have from Cornbread and Honey, which is really, really pretty. Um, I'm doing the Sweet Mountain glasses on so I can see the right side of this. The Sweet Mountain Wrap. Um, I'm doing that. And that is uh, getting that done. Okay, so my next one is my Sweet Mountain Shawl. I had to get it untangled. Excuse me. Okay. I like the colors, the way they are knitting up. This is another one of her scrappy cakes from Cornbread and Honey. Um, I got my purple in there and then back to the variegated. I love the all the holes, very eerie, um, bright colors in there. Liking this, really do like the way this is turning out. Worked on this quite a bit. Um, I'm going to actually put a stitch marker so that we know where we're at in case we don't get it done by next podcast. Um, but yeah, we've been working on this one quite a bit. Got a lot done on it. But I wanted to get this one done, so I worked on this quite a bit over the weekend. But um, yeah, so that's where that is. It's looking pretty good. Liking it. And that again is... My cornbread and honey scrappy cake that I have. It is a couple of colors of purple. So there's a deeper, darker purple in there. And then the light purple on the outside with this really bright color in the middle. Um, 
I like how it's kind of doing a little bit of a pooling, striping effect on the shawl. So, but that's, those are all of my current whips that I have. Now, my, I talked about casting on that sweater with those two skeins of yarn. Well, when I got really reading the pattern, I was not going to have enough for that sweater. So I decided to do um, the rocket tee. So I cast on to do the rocket tee. Um, just started getting in, you do the beginning of it flat for the first round. And then once you get so far, you connect them. I think it's to connect into the V and then you go out and work under your arms. We're doing some reglan increases here. Um, but yeah, it's, I just started it. This is another one that I really have to pay attention to what I'm doing and know where I'm increasing and it just needs to be quiet in my head to be able to do this. So once I get past this and I start working in the round, I think it'll be okay. It's just getting all of these increases done exactly where they need to be. But we're working on it. But that's my newest cast on is my Rocket T. I still plan on doing that t-shirt or that little sweater type thing. Um, I have, I forgot I had this big, huge cake of yarn from um hobby that i got and it's um 85 percent superwash virgin wool 25 percent polymade and 10 percent cashmere that would be a nice sweater and it changes color so um yeah i'm thinking this is what i'm going to do my sweater in there is almost 900 yards here which those I was, I needed, I need 960 for the, um, long or the full length sleeve pattern. And I'm not going to do the full length sleeve pattern. So this is what we're going to use. Hopefully I have enough. If not, we'll see what we're going to do. We might be making a crop shirt. Who knows? But that's what we've got to go with. And it is color 08. It doesn't say what color it is, but it's got, um, as you can see, there's quite a few colors in there. And the, the purple and the coral color, red. So I think it's going to be pretty. But that's what I plan on uh, doing that sweater with. So that's one of the ones I want to get caked up, or not caked up because it's already kind of caked up. I can just use it from here uh started on cast on and get working on but we'll see um but that's that's the plan that i have for that uh the next thing that i have is my next plan is i have a lot of cowls and i like like i said i like hats i like to wear hats because my ears get cold so I have a cowl that I made with these two, let's put them this way, with these two held together. And I thought, you know what, I have plenty of yarn here. Why not take these two, cast on, and do a beanie type hat, which is the hat that I actually really enjoy wearing. Um, and cast on and do a beanie type hat so when I wear that cowl, I can have a hat that matches. So that's number one. Number two was going to be the last uh, shawl or last cowl that I made, which was the bandana cowl with this uh, yarn. I'm going to do the same thing. I believe I have just enough here in these two to hold double and to give myself a nice beanie here. And then I have a um, cowl made out of this. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to make a 
beanie with this. And I'm just gonna hold this double to make it so that it's a little bit warmer of a beanie than to just singly. Everything else will be held double. Um, but yeah, so that's why I thought to use some of my old skeins of yarn that I had, cast on and do some beanies. Those would be relatively easy, non-thinking beanies if I'm going to, when I go to the retreat or when I'm sitting and knitting someplace that I want to talk, I can just cast, uh, you know, do those beanies and not have to worry about thinking and talking about a pattern. I can just cast on and do those. So those are the next three things that I plan on casting on. As soon as I do one, I'll cast one on, do it. Once it's off the needles, I'll cast another one on. I won't have them all going at the same time. But I do have them all in the same bag, which is um, one of my large bags with snap bags with handles. Um, but yeah, that's one project. The next project that I have that I want to do is another Tunisian crochet project. I got um, this skein of yarn, which is a very pretty skein of yarn. It's got some blues and purples. Um, and some turquoise in it, which I like. Um, I plan on using this for another Tunisian cowl. I have one that um, I need to work in the round, so I had to get some needles and so that I can do Tunisian crochet in the round. I had somebody look at the pattern this past weekend when I was at um, a knitting place, I guess I want to say. I was, you know, sitting and knitting with some friends and um, one of the girls there does uh, Tunisian crochet. So I had her look at the pattern and asked her, would I be able to do this? Am I picking a too hard of pattern for my second Tunisian crochet since I'm not very good at it and it's something new? And she's like, nope, as long as you know all of these stitches here, how to do them, you should be good. It's relatively easy. She did tell me if you, when you, because I've never done in the round, I've only done back and forth. She says, if you are going to do in the round, she says, what we've done before is you put uh, the size hook you want on the needle when you pick up and then you use a smaller hook when you take off. If that makes any sense, I'm hoping it does. I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I don't know. But that's what um, she said you, you do. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Um, but yeah. Or maybe it's the other way around. I don't know. I'll ask her again before I actually start doing it. Um, I'm like I said, I, I got to get my circular needle for um, Tunisian crochet. So that's where I'm at with that. It's in a bag that was gifted to me at Christmas time. A little mushroom bag. Really like this little bag. It's cute. Um, but yeah, one of my knitting uh, friends gave this bag to me. She made it. She made some little bags, and they were so super cute. Um, makes a nice little sock bag. So I guess that is all of the knitting content that I have. I have some acquisitions. So let's go talk about those. Okay, so I've said in previous videos that I signed up for two different um, monthly, kind of monthly yarn uh, clubs. Uh, one is Kimber's Cozy Creation, and it's her year of color, year in color. And um, she had the option of getting either a solid color or a variegated color. And I have so many variegated colors that I thought, you know what, I'm going to get the solid colors of this. Um, and she shows... If you look far enough in her story, she will actually, the very last page, will show you what each one looks like and give you plenty of time in the beginning to say, oh, I want the variegated one or, oh, no, I want the um, solid color still because I can change monthly if I want to. I just have to let her know way in advance. So when she puts it out in 
So she already put out November's colorway back a week ago, I think, or two weeks ago, maybe. Right after we paid for our February, she put the colorway out for um, February so that we knew what the colorway was going to be for that month. So you can go through and look to see what it is. Um, so that's nice that you're able to have that option. So this is my January colorway. Um, this really pretty blue. I have a number of variegateds that this can go with. So I'm really, really um, happy that I, I decided to stay with the solid color. And there's actually a little uh, stitch marker on there that came with it this time. So this is what we got. It is called, it's just called the Royal Blue. Really, really pretty. Love it. Um, take my stitch marker off so that I don't lose it. But yeah, so this is her um, year in color. And this is the Royal Blue that came with, that I got the solid this time. And of course I get sock yarn because I can use it to make shawls and stuff like that or socks. Um, but yeah, I have a number of colors. I mean, this is one of the, the colors that I got from her. Um, this is my winter waterline. This was my November or December colorway. And this would go if I held the two together in a shawl or something. So that one would go too. And then I have this one that I got a while ago. I got last year when I was in, um, uh, Tennessee and of course this would go with that too if I wanted to hold a variegated and that so I've got a couple of things that I could actually really use this with so I am so glad that I stayed with the solid colors and um, I kind of forgot I picked the solid color when it came I was like oh I didn't realize I did that and then I remembered I'm like oh yeah she gave us that option so I was I'm, I'm really thrilled that I kept the solid color Okay, so then the other um, monthly yarn that I get, I signed up for Cornbread and Honey's Her Patreon account, which is, she uses it basically for a, uh, like a monthly yarn club, but you just pay uh, for the membership and then she sends you yarn each month. So this is her January, and it's her label there. This is her January um, Patreon color. It's really pretty. I like it. So pretty. It's got um, the reds and the burgundies, brown and some black. And then of course your white. Yeah, really, really happy with this colorway. That's where I went to her shop on Saturday or Sunday and was sitting and knitting and I was able to pick up my colorways that I got from her. I messaged her and told her, um, don't ship them. I'll be there to pick them up. But yeah, so I got that. And then of course she has a birthday box that she's putting out because in March they are nine years old and, um, she put a birthday color, a uh, birthday box out and, um, I grabbed one of those so that I could get a birthday box, but, um, she also put out these, she calls them one pot wonders and it was in a uh, DK weight and I absolutely fell in love with that. It. It's gorgeous. I love the color of it. Nice purple, pink speckled. Um, yeah, uh, she might still have another one of these left in the shop. There was two. I just grabbed one. But yeah. One Pot Wonders, she, with these, she just dies. She doesn't write anything down. So I'm sure when you're dying, um, just like when you're doing other things, you make something and you just want to die without having to have to reproduce it multiple times. And I think that's what she does. She just takes a couple, two or three trays and she puts some yarn in them and she just dies. 
and just experiments to see what she has. And they're her one pot wonders. And this one, I love it. It's gorgeous. I haven't been disappointed with any of the yarn that I have gotten from her. Very happy with it. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I do have a couple of people in my family who really, really like purple. Um, could make some hats. It could do a couple of different things with it. It's DK weight, so it's... Um, I probably wouldn't do socks with it, although I could do some heavier weight socks and absolutely would be fine. Um, but yeah, I haven't, don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I did fall in love with the color. And it's one of those things when I look at a color, if I like something, I, instead of buying it immediately, I was like, oh, I'll just look again later and see if it's available. If it's gone, it wasn't meant for me to have. If it's there after two or three times of me looking at it, then it's for me to have. And that's what happened. Um, she posted them, and I know they were going. She kept saying they're going fast, and I know, okay. You know, I look on the website, and it was still available. So when her box came up for the birthday box, I thought, well, I'm going to buy that. And then I just added this onto it so that I could get this because I liked it, and I wanted it. So those are my acquisitions. Just three, not too many. Next month, I'm going to, next podcast, I'm going to have a lot because my advent from Cornbread and Honey, she did her Christmas advent. Now, it's all been out and everybody has seen it all. And I've seen all the pictures of the yarn, but I haven't seen the yarn in person. She redid another thing of Advent because she sold out of those rather quickly last year and she figured she'd give the option for those that couldn't get them or didn't see and get it in time for an option to do another round of the Advent. So I grabbed up on it. I was like, yeah, yeah, I would like one. But you know, when it went out, I never saw it because I wasn't following her at that point in time. And when I did, it they were already sold out. Uh, so when she put that out, I thought, you know what, I, I, I want to grab that. So I did, and that should be coming. She's hoping to have them shipped out by the end of next week, um, which would be fun. Um, yeah, and if I don't get there to pick them up, she'll ship it to me, which is okay. But yeah, that I have coming. And then, of course, I'll have my birthday box and then the monthly colorways from both of my places. It's gonna We're going to have some yarn coming in. It's going to be fun. But that is all of my acquisitions at the moment. So now let's talk about our news because we have some good stuff coming up. Okay, so the news that we have, we are going to be doing some trunk shows here. Um, our first one, uh, where we're going to be at, um, I'm not personally doing the trunk show myself, but um, uh, Cornbread and Honey is doing a uh, show she's at the wild and woolly festival at the um, Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds in Ohio She is doing that festival and she is packing up the whole store She said which means she is taking my bags that she has in the store with her So if you guys are interested in seeing any of the bags in person and you are in Ohio on February 10th um, stop over and see her, pick up some yarn, give her some love, and look at the bags. See what you've got and see if there's anything there that you might want. Uh, they are open from 11 to 4. It is a $5 admission fee to get into the fairgrounds that day. They are having a number of um, giveaways, raffles, that type of thing. So there's going to be stuff from all the different places that are going to be raffled off. It's going to be a good day. I was hoping to be able to go, but I have prior commitments where I need to be somewhere else that day. So I was kind of hoping that I, we could do it together um, since she had asked me if she could take my bags and I was going to offer to just, you know, be there and to help. But um, yeah, sh I'm not going to be able to. So She's that is going to be the first place that my bags will be at. So they will be it's next Saturday, 
uh, February 10th at um, Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds. I will put the information down below for the Wild and Wooly Festival and um, that will be in the information down below. So if you guys want the directions or anything on that, it'll be, I will put them in the show notes below. Okay, so the next place that we are going to be, we are, this one's, I'm, I'm really excited about this. We got into, um, I'm looking at getting into different stores for the yarn crawls because as I'm finding out, every state has some sort of a yarn crawl sometime during the year. So just finding out when they are and getting in touch with the yarn stores in the area and see if any of them will be interested in doing a trunk show. So I got a hold of Busy Sticks in Lafayette, California, and she has agreed to do a trunk show for me for the Bay Area Yarn Crawl that they have going on this year, and it is from March 15th to March 24th. Um, when I was talking to Marsha from Busy Sticks, she had said to me, well, is there any way you can get the bags here a little bit sooner, say like the 1st of March, and I'll keep them till the end of March so that we can see how they go? And I was like, absolutely. So we are going to have almost a month-long uh, yarn, or not, not yarn, month-long trunk show at Busy Sticks in um, Lafayette, California. Of course, I will not be going to Lafayette, California to sit there one day. I would love to, but you know, it's a little far to drive in a short amount of time. So um, yeah, so that is one of the next places we are going to be. So you should be able to see my bags if you are in California or going to be going to that uh, yarn crawl out there. And again, I will put her information and all of the information for that yarn crawl in the show notes below so you guys can have the information of when that is running there is a number of shops i looked on their website for the yarn crawl and i want to say there is like 15 or 20 shops that are in excuse me this yarn crawl so there is a number of shops in here so it's going to be a pretty big um yarn crawl um but it is their first one, I believe they said. So they have no idea how many people they're going to get. Um, they're expecting a certain number of people, but there's a lot of people that go to these things and, you know, they'll fly in for the weekend to do, you know, to, to go to these things and drive in from, you know, Utah and Arizona and stuff like that to do these, these kind of things. So, um, yeah, so they're hoping to be able to have a good turnout but that is I'm really excited about that show and itself I have some other ones coming up uh, trying to finalize the rest of those so that I have um, them we have some on the books for April some on the books for May and then of course some of my local um, shows that I'm gonna be doing start in May and they run through the whole summer from May to September. My plan is to try to get one to two trunk shows a month if I can, on top of everything else, all the shows that I'm doing as well. Um, but yeah, that's my plan for this year. If it doesn't happen, if I only get one a month, that's okay. Um, I only had a couple last year. And, you know, uh, my plan is to at least try to get at least one a month. Um, January was not going to be a month that I was going to try to get anybody. Everybody was just after Christmas. They're not ready to buy yet. But um, there is, and I'm going to keep this in mind for next year, there is a yarn crawl at one of the places in February, which, you know, I could possibly, well, wasn't just the... Um, Oh, the one in New Jersey. I think there was a New Jersey yarn crawl this week or a festival this weekend or last weekend um, that they had. So, I mean, there's other places that I could possibly um, get early in the year, but, you know, it's now working on it now for next year. And I'm still working on this year, so I can't get my brain around something like that yet. Um, 
but yeah, hopefully next year, maybe I'll have some place in February and, you know, March, April, May, June, every month I'll be able to say that we have a yarn store, a trunk show at a yarn store. That's my plan. We'll see. I don't really know yet what is going to happen with the rest of the year here. Um, I've got a number of feelers out there just waiting for people to get back to me with different things. Um, and then I'll be making some more calls to try to get other things on the books as well. But um, so that is it for my news. I don't think there's anything else that I need to talk about. Just wanted to go over those type of things and see where we're at. Um, working on some new bags, so hopefully maybe next podcast I'll have some of the new bags that I'm going to hopefully have in the shop um, made to show you guys. Um, I have a good size order of the light bags that I do for cross-stitching for uh, the Crafty You. She put another order in, so I have to get those made for her before the end of the month, um, end of next month end of February and get them sent to her. She's doing some shows and wants more bags. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, just trying to get all of my ducks in a row to be able to get everything done that I need to do. But I guess that's it for today's video, guys. I really appreciate you sticking around and listening to me, um, letting me show off my finished objects and all of the work in progress that I have on all of my knitting. And as always, I will see you on the next one. Have a good day. Bye.